tonight we're going to focus on brakes. Um, as some of you may have seen, we predominantly offer packages um, with a brand called Tarox. And um, as Andy briefly said, we've actually got Nick from Tarox UK here tonight. Um, so we're going to start off firstly with just having a, a bit of a chat with Nick. And then I'm then going to go on to talk about what we offer and what Tarox now offer for your vehicles and, and all of the Jaguar range. So we cover pretty much all of the range from kind of a classic E-Type all the way up to the more modern vehicles. And we do a large number of direct replacements with Tarox um, from day-to-day -day road use all the way to high performance track use. So, uh, so Nick, so first of all, I just thought it'd be nice just for you to give everyone a bit of a background on Tarox and, and who Tarox are and, and where it all started. Yeah, of course. Um, hello, everyone. I've been at Tarox for 17 years. Um, so part of the fabric of the company, we're an Italian company with offices in the UK, USA, Japan, and mainland Europe. Um, we've been around now since 76. That's when we first started playing around with different aspects of improving a car's braking system. Um, on the road cars that we were working on in that time, Italian, typical of fast road Italian cars, we were grooving brake discs, drilling brake discs, doing, as um, our founder Gianni was a racing driver and a stunt driver for the Fiat group, he found that he needed to get as much out of his brakes as he could. And this was in the early days of the Dunlop discs. So he just CNC'd grooves into them believing that they would help um, get rid of water and, and gases. And he started with drilling as well. Um, but what really sort of got him going forwards was hollowing out, I'm sure some of the um, people that are into more the classic range of, of Jaguars will see the early um, calipers that had very large single pistons. Um, what he, and the Formula One cars at the time had a very similar system, you know, sort of two big pistons or four big pistons on, on either side, quite um, on cast iron. And what he was doing, he was milling out the cast iron and filling it with um, an oxide, metal-based oxide, and stuffing that into the pistons. And that was helping dissipate heat, but also reducing the overall braking system. And that, was, that technology was pioneered in Formula One. Um, and that's where really it gave him the, the money and the ability through the 80s to, yeah. to put into CNC work, into design, into development, into dynos, into everything that you need really to be a modern day performance company to keep up with the manufacturers really and to keep in front of them. The manufacturers um, do a great job of making very good packaged cars and our job is to improve on a very good package. But what we do have the flexibility is in, we don't have the same restrictions through noise and vibration. Um, the overall packaged car has to be com compliant. And then the people that we deal with, they're looking to sacrifice some of that compliance for performance. And that's where the, the, the gap opens from um, brakes being just good enough for the average user to be good enough for that person who is pushing on a little bit more Sunday driving, B roads, track days maybe. Um, so since probably around the late eighties, early nineties, when Formula One uh, became more about money and sponsorship, when the, I mean, we, he sort of cites 92 as the time when we were supplying three or four manufacturers, but it went from, in the early days, we made parts, they paid for them. And then late 80s, early 90s, we made parts, they didn't pay for them. And then mid 90s, early 2000s, we made parts and they wanted a lot of money for us to supply them parts as well. So the dynamic changed and we changed from being a racing focused company to a fast road, off road, overland um, company that sort of Racing now is more um, small formulas, Formula 3000, Formula Renault, Formula Junior, 
and more races, um, more touring car and GT racing, staying away from the lucrative world of um, of the high end and and really focusing on the, the, the difference is split really dramatically from probably mid 2000s of what works on a road car and what works on a race car. They've really, as cars have got very much heavier and much faster, um, for instance, uh, you know, a, a fast Jaguar has 380 millimeter discs, whereas a fast Formula One car has 280 millimeter discs made yeah. from solid pieces of carbon. And there's, there's just the difference is uh, uh, it's harder to sort of put them across. So yeah, we are a, a company focused on, um, on making performance parts to the highest of qualities for road users around the world, whether that's the Far East or America or, or Europe and the UK. Um, so yeah, it, that's where we are now. We are probably the most certified of um, performance brake manufacturers after um, OE, Brembo. I would say that that's, after that, that's us. We do a lot of testing. We spend a lot of money on testing in Germany to make sure our parts can be sold as um, within the warranty time. So a lot of our parts, although it's not a big, issue in the UK, um, in Germany and mainland Europe, um, TUV certificates, KVA approval, telecadactes, there's quite a lot of testing that has to happen for you to be able to take off your OE parts within the warranty period, yeah. even after the warranty period, and put performance parts on. So we spend probably a, a, the most amount of our budget is, is testing and certifying to make sure that although not particularly applicable to UK cars that the parts we're supplying are well over and above what you are taking taking off the car. I'm really glad you picked up on that point about the warranty because it's something that we as a company get asked a lot some people have a, a high performance car that still might be in warranty but they're experiencing brake problems when they're using it to its full capabilities but as you were saying, you've got a huge amount of testing that proves that it that it is covered on warranty. We've had quite a few cars actually go back to the dealership still in warranty with with the Tarox products with no issues. Now, just going. Yeah, back we've to even the... we've even got Alpha, Alpha and Mayo have just put an order in for some aftermarket parts, and they're paying for a customer's warranty because they they can't, you know, and that that happens quite a bit. Um, it is, and it is because of the approvals. It is. There are still, even though the, manu the, the manufacturers have got so much control over aftermarket parts, yeah. there's still quite a lot of legality hidden that they try to hide that means that you can fit these parts and other people can fit them for you, but they're just not very, they don't make it very easy for, for the aftermarket and especially aftermarket performance. And do Tarox actually still um, supply for OEM any direct manufacture fit? Yeah, um, Ford um, is probably our biggest. So we have a contract with Ford, which allows um, all of our parts to be fitted, either tick box option on, on your Ford ST. So you can, yeah. um, if it's new in a dealership, you can just tick the box and you can start at a pad and uh, or you can have a pad and a disc or a full caliper kit. Um, that's throughout the range of Ford. Um, and then there's, when it's fitted as standard, it's normally niche, smaller niche companies like Aero yeah. or KTM or Donkervort, where people are building small volume, high, high quality cars because we're small volume. You know, at the end of the day, we, we're not a casting house. We are a CNC manufacturer. So, yeah we can't get down to 250 euros a unit for a caliper because we, we, we know we're CNC in our five access um, out of the highest quality billet alloys. We're not bringing in anything, anything at all that's not made in the UK or Italy. Some of our steel comes from Sheffield and our alloys come from Italy and, and that's it really. That's as far as we, we stretch with our sourcing our materials. And that, that goes back to, if I'm right in saying, Tarox as a, as a brand are actually still quite family owned, aren't they? They're quite a small Very company much. in a scale of what, what you guys impact on in, in the brake industry. 
And from from my understanding with the early days, am I right in saying it was one of the first grooved um, rotors that were actually put into production with trying all sorts of methods of sawing and is that with the G88 design? Yeah, this? yeah, he's definitely tried everything he could at the time. He was um, somebody who just enjoyed engineering and enjoyed driving. So just a combination of those led him down different paths um, for different levels of performance, uh, whether that was making his own machine to, to achieve what he wanted to achieve on the brake disc. Yeah. Um, he was a big believer in, he used, at the time, drilled holes were being used um, in motorsport and he just had too many failures with them while out on the road. And so that's with them cracking, is it, Nick? Yeah, just cracking. I, I you know, road, motorsport is a is an industry that is the, the aim is to win and, and whatever cost. So if you if you finish a race and the discs are scrap, it's fine if you did yeah. well. Um, and that doesn't always really translate to the road market. So he wanted to to look at different ways of removing waters and gases away from the disc without having to, if he could help it, penetrate all the way through the disc, causing yep. a, a weak point in, in the disc. And that's really since 83 um, and his first disc, um, very different variations of grooving, um, which work better for different vehicles. Because that's still quite distinctive today, isn't it, compared to some of the other manufacturers? I'll talk through all the different designs later in some of the slides, but you've got three um, options you now offer, and they're pretty distinctive, aren't they? You've got um, the F2000, which I don't believe any other matcher does any a manufacturer does anything similar. Um, the Sport Japan, which is the, the drilled and slotted, isn't it? And then the, the G88, which is, I've never seen anything else like that on the market. And it is distinctively Tarox, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's hard to, the G88 is hard to replicate um, because he designed and built a machine that makes it. And it's not made on a CNC machine. It's, um, it is, like you said, a saw that comes into the disc on an angle, on an angle both into the disc and, and radially down the disc so that it's um, it's got a leading and chamfered edge so that a lot of people worry that when they're using performance um, discs or groove discs with pads that the, the grooving can damage the pad and if you run your finger along uh, one of our G88 discs you'll, you'll feel it quite smooth but if you pull it back the other way it, it's quite aggressive so um, and that was really, it works like a radial grooves, like a turbine vein. As soon as it's spinning up, it's, it's constantly throwing hot air and gas from the center outwards. Um, the only issue is that when cars started to get heavier and faster um, in the sort of mid 2000s with the brake horsepower race from the Germans, the, the, emphasis changed really from um, strength to dis from from dissipating heat to strength because the cars just became so heavy so we then designed the f2000 in the year 2000 um, to be a stronger disc that could cope with more um, aggressive like the Nürburgring was being used all the time and the GTA was it's still now on the dyno cools faster than the f2000 but it doesn't last as long it has a higher um x you know a lower explode rate um because it's got more metal taken away from it and essentially basic engineering the more metal we take away from a disc the weaker it, it will become so it's always finding that balance whenever we get a disc we're always three so the first thing we do is 3D scan it and look for where the weak points are anyway. Because, um, most vented discs have um, you know, internal channels. So what we're doing is yep. making sure we, when we drill a, a hole for the sport Japan or we put a slot in, these are all strategically placed. And that's where you find the differences between, you know, maybe something on eBay saying, oh, I've grooved a disc, or I've slotted a disc. Yeah. There, there's a lot can go wrong if you do it in the wrong place. So there's a lot of effort goes into making sure that when we start out 
with a product. There's a lot of research going into every single disc to make sure that we can drill a hole in that place or we can put a groove in that place. And if we can't, then we won't. We go back to the drawing board. I, th I think that's pretty obvious when those of you who have seen any of the Tarot's products, when you even receive um, a disc or a pad, even the internal finishing on the actual disc where the, the veins are, where the curved vein that Tarot's use, even that's that's polishedly smooth, isn't it, Nick? So yeah. um, most OEM or any other discs are, are just a rough car, so they don't spend any time cleaning or, or preventing any of that um, buildup that comes inside on the sand cast in there. So the quality is just... Yeah, they don't really have, have a process. Um, they cast the disc and then they sell a disc. And that, and that, for the vast majority of people, is absolutely fine. But what we want to do is be able to offer our customers a disc that can just take abuse, hard driving, better longevity. So what we do is we, we get the raw casts and we have a casting partner because we're not big enough to, to cast on our own. And Italy is quite a big manufacturer of brakes and we're only 25 kilometers away from one of the other big brake manufacturers in Italy um, and we share a lot of the time we share boundaries so well, once we get the, the, the cast disc we then that's when our processes start and we first of all have a um, heat treatment facility so we're running all the bare cast all the grey cast through a long-term heat treatment that gives it a lot that stabilizes the metal and aids it in performance and then once we've it's come out of that the disc is essentially rested but also warped a little bit as from from the heat treatment so we'll then do all the engineering work to it and then we'll give it the anti-rush treatment um so it's been heat treated it's been um anti-rush treated and then it'll have all, the, whether it's a drilled and grooved disc or a grooved disc or a plain disc, it'll have, you know, whatever engineering we need to do, stud holes. And then what we do is the final process is we have a run of sort of balancing machines, really, like a lathe balancer, where it's, but it's, it's not got a cutter on it. It's got a, a polisher. It's got a um, sort of a stone diamond polisher that we, we run manually. So each disc yeah. gets spun up and then we just bring in the two stones and we just polish that disc up straight so we, we we're, we're taking fractions and fractions off the the surface of the disc but when that comes off there you'll see it's a very finely smooth surface but we also know it's straight it's perfectly straight and it's perfectly flat so the bedding in process from the brake pad is a lot quicker and a lot easier because you, you're working with a 0 0.001 um flat disc so that should help going forward as well yeah i mean that that's a really good point um going back to tolerances because for example with a standard oem disc i believe it's 0 0.10 of a tolerance so it's like it's more than double what the tolerance is you're, you're working yeah. to there yeah. so that's a really good kind of example of how refined it is now just, just going back to um the early history we we're talking about earlier i think for you, what would you say is kind of Tarox's unique touch? I mean, one of the things you, you've said to me, which I just think is rare in such a, a big um, company that they are today today now, is from what I understand, the, is it the apprentice of Giovanni, the original owner, still signs off and pressure touches, pressure, pressure tests each caliper? The caliper the side of things, yeah. Yeah, they definitely take the caliper side of things very, very seriously. Um, we were probably the first, well, we weren't, no, we were the first people to do a six pot and we were the first people to really start using taking racing technology that we were using at the time but brembo were using and ap were using we we're all using it on the race cars and start to work out how we could convert these calipers to be used on the road and not just the calipers the two-piece discs because we realized yeah. just how much weight they saved and how much better they were at dissipating heat than um than a regular disc so we got an E30 M3 um, in 91 and started work using racing calipers, converting them. But what we found at the time using the racing four pot is that we, the pedal just sank because we were using these big racing four pots yeah. and the car had a single pot slider and the OE master cylinder couldn't cope with it. And we believed at the time that our mission was to be able to deliver 
the system that could work with the OE master cylinder. So we, Johnny then decided to basically split down the piston so there was less surface area to push in one big go. So smaller pistons needed less effort. So he went, went for three smaller pistons on one side rather than two bigger pistons. And that's how we ended up using more pistons than what is traditionally thought as, um, as a good starting place. So yeah, the calipers are all machined from Billy and they're all still hand, um, Biagio who um, has been there since he was 20 and uh, he's 50 now. He's still the last of the line or the last on the assembly line. So he's the guy that pops the pistons in once the calipers have been, so the CNC'd, once they've been anodized, all the extras have been put on, bleedicles, banjo bolts, things like that. Biagio still puts in the pistons, seals the caliper, puts it on the pressure tester and just, um, yeah, vacuums it, holds it there for a minute, makes sure it's, it keeps its vacuum and then signs it. And he actually puts a little, you'll see on most of them, they have a little B. That he yeah, has the logo. It. And um, that's it then, it means it's done. So there's no, and that's what unfortunately holds us back. We were in, we were in 2019 before the craziness, we were in with McLaren and, um, but the numbers are just too high. We can't, we can't make that much. So that was for off. McLaren's road applications, was it? Yeah, yeah, to replace Akibono. And um, they, they had a caliper, they'd seen the caliper, they'd secretly bought one of the calipers it's the B38 that you've you've, yeah. you've been using at the moment on um and they yeah they wanted it but we just can't get to a couple of hundred dollars per caliper and we can't get to 10,000 calipers a year we are fundamentally a family owned company who want to have control of what we make um the the company is owned by the daughter of the founder um it's run with her husband, my director, who also has come from Formula One. And they've, 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 they're good friends with a lot of people in, in the bigger companies like Brembo and Bill Stein, who've been bought out by, like Bill Stein's now owned by ThyssenKrupp Group and Brembo's owned by a huge amount of shareholders. And they just, they want control at the end of the day. And that comes with its downsides. And that is the, the size of our manufacturing really so yeah i, I just think that is such a, a unique touch for, for a company and that's why i mean we started working with you nick was it sort of end of 2019 going into to last year before kind of lockdowns and uh we wanted to the the tarot's catalog was quite small for the jaguar range then wasn't it and not many companies as most of you are probably aware offer um performance applications for the jaguar range so um, we actually got in contact with yourself, didn't we, Nick? And we started to to go back through um, yourself and give you all the Jaguar part numbers, sizes, dimension, and try and build a catalog of direct replacement discs first, wasn't it? And then you already had some applications in the catalog for replacement. So I'm going to talk through these later, um, but we've now at a point um, where we've managed to cover quite a bulk of the range, haven't we, with the direct replacement um, yeah. and the OEM pad option. So um, it's been... Yeah, a the range is... I mean, for people that are maybe on the older side of the range, the, we do have two parts of the business. We also do replicate... Um, discs that aren't easy to find now. So um, whether it's something that's just not made anymore because the car's in such low volume and casting is such a big job to do. You need five, maybe 500 um, discs before somebody will really decide to recast something. So we have the bespoke range, which goes all the way back to, we can do XK150s, E-types, Countaches, Muras, Ferraris, everything really, because what we're doing is CNC in a disc from a special steel, a heat treated um, steel that we get in the UK, which has been tempered for, for road use. And then so they're sort of what we call the bespoke discs. And then it just turns into the sort of 80s, 90s, which we've always had a little bit of range, but never sold or done anything with it. Um, and then when Tom came along, he just said, 
I think the, the Jaguar markets, you know, it's expanding exponentially and there's demand for different upgrades, but you literally, I think you're the kind of company you want to work with, but we, you don't really offer anything. So we, we just embarked in the beginning of 2019 on, the, on, a, on a long project to cross-reference all the numbers Tom could get his hands on and just begin building and making and testing. The numbers are huge, aren't they? Like Jaguar and Land Rover will use sort of 10 different part numbers, sometimes more for the same disc size, wouldn't they? So it was quite a headache to work through. All yeah, the compared numbers. to what we used to with BMW and Volkswagen, where one number can fit like 20 cars, it was 20 numbers fit one car. Um, so it was quite a, quite um, an Im- a big task. But we, um, I think we've got a, a fairly substantial range. And what's good is... If there is, because we are small and flexible, if there isn't anything in the range, um, we can we can get there. And um, we have a, the range is also brake discs, brake pads, full uprated systems, and um, brake hoses. Um, we learn through Tom that brake lines, the rubber brake lines, um, all, all the steel ones, on a lot of the cars were becoming really hard to source um and becoming quite expensive from jlr so we embarked on that making you know getting the lengths of, of hoses and so we make um we make hoses as well so you know getting really the whole package from fluid hoses pads discs calipers um we we can we try to be one of the only manufacturers that that, that can offer that that's brilliant no i really appreciate your time nick and um, is there anyone got any questions directly for Nick? Before I've seen one in the, the chat. Um, for the tarot. So now I'm going to talk about, obviously, the Jaguar fitament side of things and range later. What I, what I was going to say, Tom, is um, did you want to go? I've got questions from Roger, Stephen, Hugh, Jeff. I think there's a few more as well. Yeah, I've, read, um, I've, also, read, what, I've also read those as well. So if there's anything I can help with, um, I'll, I'll be here for another five, ten minutes. I can... I can try. Do, and do we do we want to do that first, Andy, and then I'll talk about the actual Jaguar fitments after that? Okay, yeah, no problem at all. But if shall I just read them out then uh, in yeah, no that's particular fine. order? It's just easier rather than taking people off mute. So um, I know Stephen is um, is is on the call. Um, and Stephen has asked, uh, do drilled and slotted discs create more noise and dust? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's impossible to deny. That's, that comes back to really what I opened with is the reason that a lot of manufacturers don't use them is they have, no, they have a thing called the noise vibration test that more or less every part of the car has to go through. And it becomes a level in the Venn diagram of where a car's performance is more important than its comfort. Um, so for instance we're testing an M4 at the moment the car came with originally with drilled discs and we've put a slotted disc on um, and there's an, the discs were noisier with the drills on than the slots but I would say that they're generating a little bit more dust with the slots so the result yeah whenever you <clears throat> unfortunately whenever you mess with that surface and the brake pad comes into contact with that surface if that surface isn't 100% flat then there will be a greater level of of noise because there's air passing through the drilled holes and also um the the slots passing through this it's for most bit it's not a squeak or a squeal it's just and it's obviously not all the time but when you're pressing heavy on the brakes you can hear the hot air moving away from the surface of the disc uh, and that's what it is it is very minimal though with with the tarox range from our experience it's hard for me to have a, a, um, a, a if after 17 years and nearly every single car I drive has, has got them on. It, it's sometimes yeah. difficult for me to remember what they, they sound like as a, as a, a playing disc. So, From a personal point of view, I had the Tarox put on my XJ um, a couple of months ago uh, by yeah. Mr. Robinson himself. Mm. Um Okay, and I, I, I haven't noticed any difference uh, in terms of noise um, or dust. Perfect. 
I, th I think also with the um, some of the applications that we replace have already got those of you who've got the XKR have already got a drilled rotor on the car. There will be nearly no difference going over to the F2000, which is predominantly what we fit. Yeah. Yeah. Good. The, That's good to hear. The That's other questions good. that we've got are predominantly Jaguar uh, centered. Um, okay. One thing I, I would just before I, I noticed that they were more Jaguar um, centered than anything. And what I would say from looking at some of the questions um, is from just a long time in the industry with, with people, especially in the Volkswagen Audi industry that they, they, they swap and change and they, we just advise a lot of people on brakes is if you don't, if you don't um, want to go performance, definitely don't have to, but a lot of people do underestimate just how much fresh brakes make a difference. So it's the one thing that I couldn't, I know I, I work for a brake company, but fresh fluid, fluid deteriorates so quickly. It really does. And it makes such a big impact just looking after the brake systems as a whole um, will, will give you more performance because a, a, even a standard brake fluid, it's dropping its ability to cope with heat so quickly um, as it's exposed. So look after your, your fluid, look after your lines, brake lines, braided brake lines cost about 85 pounds for a set. They're made of braided stainless steel with a PTFE coating. They've got a lifetime warranty. They get away from the spongy pedal. They just, they deliver, you know, quite a, a better feeling for the pedal for not a lot of money and the safety aspect, they're not rubber, the steel. Um, so fluid, so fluid and hoses for a minimal amount of money is just a really good way of looking after the car. Um, also look within this, the model range. If you've got an XC two litre diesel, but there's another range, there's another car in that range with bigger brakes. Sometimes that's always a, you know, a good way to go is look within the range for what we call OEM plus, which is just finding what's available within the range of parts and using them to upgrade, that can sometimes help if you don't want to stretch to, you know, to a big brake kit, which can cost quite a lot of money. Um, and just do it in stages. I always say to people, don't, if you're struggling with your brakes, you don't always have to go to a big brake kit, do disimpact, do your fluid in your hoses, do some pads, do some discs and, and just see how it goes. Um, just in a question, we only use dot four because we have to be compliant. Um, a lot of OEM manufacturers now, including Jaguar, specify dot four only fluid. And we work with a chemical company in the UK that make us a dot four fluid, but has a higher rating than dot five. So it has a 315 degrees C boiling point, which is higher than most 5.1s, which is what people kind of think as the go-to high performance fluid, um, you can make a dot, you can, we are now in a position where we can make a dot four that has the right kind of boiling point, but still complies with, um, with insurance really. And, and, you know, you can't yeah. really put 5.1 in a road car and without getting into trouble if, if somebody found out. So yeah, we, we stick to dot four. Do you want do you want to, I mean, obviously people are, are using the chat function, which is what I posted at the beginning to, um, to put some questions on there, which is great. Um, Tom, I know you've got some slides to go through. and I, I'm just mindful of time because I do yeah. have some more Jaguar questions to go through, mate. Um, Nick, is it OK if we if we move on to Tom? Absolutely. Slides? Absolutely. I'm um... I'll go and help out with the, the 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 family stuff and make sure the kids are asleep. And I'll leave you guys to it. Yeah, thanks for your time, Nick. It's really no, appreciate. thank you. Thanks very thank much. much, Nick. Thank thanks you. Bye bye. Now. Bye, bye. Bye. Cheers. Tom, shall I share my screen now? Yeah. So um, hopefully that uh, gave you all a sort of an insight um, into Tarox and why we as a company decided to to partner with them and and work with them. And it's it's something I'm quite proud about that we've been able to to work with such an iconic company. So I thought now we would just talk about, obviously Nick's given you quite a lot of technical info. So I'm hoping I can fill in the gaps on where that comes across to, to the Jaguar range basically. So as Nick was 
starting off saying there, but you can start anywhere with a brake upgrade. It doesn't have to be like you can see on the right hand side there, the full brake package. So that there is is a full six spot conversion. We offer that for quite a lot of vehicles in the range, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the choice every time. There is quite a few small and quite reasonably priced upgrades you can do before you get to that. So could you go to the next slide for us, Andy? I can indeed. So first of all, going back over, Nick was just talking about it. So brake fluid, it's something we get asked all of the time and it's something that's quite often missed. Um, it used to be something that people would regularly include in servicing. With modern fluids, it isn't changed as regularly. In old, uh, so um, essentially brake fluid is absorbs water, uh, moisture from the air. So it does need to be replaced frequently. So as Nick was explaining, Tarox have developed a slightly different product where they meet a dot four standard, but it's actually boiling point is higher than a dot 5.1. So a dot 5.1 is mainly used for race applications. Jag actually did use it on some applications, for example, um, with the Alcon brake systems um, and some of the Brembo applications, they had that from factory, but it actually needs replacing nearly every year. So it's quite expensive and very maintenance heavy. Whereas a dot four, um, I think Jaguar service schedule is, is about six years for a dot four. Now we actually check for water content or moisture content every time we service a car. So you can physically see how much moisture in there, but because um, fluid is, is hygroscopic, it essentially absorbs any moisture in the air. If heat is generated, obviously in braking, it will potentially boil the fluid very slightly, which is where you'll also end up with moisture in the, fu in the fluid. So it's something that is quite often missed, just a simple brake fluid upgrade to a, to a, a modern product that complies um, is, is actually a huge benefit. So that is the cheapest entry level modification for your Jaguar. So um, to give you an idea, the, the fluid is, is around 20 pounds a litre. Um, and depending on what vehicle is, it's between half an hour to an hour. I'm sure most of you are, are probably even more comfortable bleeding the brakes, et cetera, and just changing the fluid. It does get a little bit complicated with some of the classics. If anyone has any direct questions, I will talk about that later with regards to compatibility with some of the earlier fluids, um, such as like the LHM and stuff like that with a deterioration on the seals. You do have to be careful mixing fluids, but ultimately, DOT4 is the most commonly used product across the range. It's pretty much in every road car now. And the Tarox product will exceed the 5.1 standard rating. So it is a really, really good product. So on the right hand side, you can see the, um, the brake flexes that um, Nick was talking about. Now, across the Jaguar range, um, depending on the year of the car, Jaguar actually were fitting braided lines as factory fit on certain models. So the, the earlier cars have a rubber hose. So under braking, um, when you're moving that hydraulic fluid around the system, um, as you can imagine, there's a huge amount of forces undergoing in a braking system. Um, with modern ABS systems, it's actually up to 1,000 PSI in those brake lines. So as you can imagine, if it's not a, a coated braided line and it's rubber, there's going to be flex in that hose. So as you're pushing on that pedal, you're going to get slight flex under braking so it's very minimal but you will feel it under braking so a simple alternative is to literally have a direct replacement to a braided line um, it's something that we've been working with tarox for a while now and it, we're not quite there with every model um, but we do cover quite a lot of the range so the, the hoses are around 85 pounds then again depending on obviously which vehicle you own is depending on the time it will take to swap but all of the Tarox products, um, they actually produce the hoses with Goodridge, which is actually the original manufacturer for Jaguar. Um, and they are all highly tested, TUV approved, et cetera. So they won't void any warranties um, and they meet all the highest um, safety requirements. They actually comply to a lot of the European standards, which we don't have to do in the UK here. Um, so some of the German regulations are covered. So that is a really simple upgrade. Again, we would always combine that with the fluid. Um, so if you go to the next slide for us, please, Andy. So pads and pad compound. Now this is, this is a topic um, that we can talk about for quite a long time. There's a massive variations in brands and pad compounds. And as Nick was kind of briefly touching in on earlier, um, there's often a compromise with um, pad and disc materials. You obviously are, 
want to, to run your brakes cool, but in doing that, you obviously are removing room material, which runs the risk of breakages. And you have the same compromise with pads. Different materials will generate different amounts of heat, different pedal feel. Um, and generally speaking, sometimes the more aggressive pads, so like a race pad is quite heavy on discs. So it's a combination of a huge amount of factors to, to offer the end user the, the best compromise, essentially. So Tarots keep it quite simple, simple with their pads. Um, now they offer three options. So they offer Strada, Corsa and Competition Ose. And all three of those are all they have in the range. Now, no matter whether you've got a standard OEM caliper or you have a Tarox or even other manufactured calipers, they generally offer a pad shape to suit that. So um, obviously you probably heard by my terrible Italian, all of that is Italian and the, the, the English variations for that is road, track fast road and racing. So it, it's quite simple. So all of the applications that we fit here for, for road use is with the Strada pad. We actually very rarely ever use the Corsa. So, as I was explaining earlier, you're always having this balance um, with brake pads. So if you're using a Strada, a Strada will work great all the way through the heat range. Um, they are actually very good for, for, for light track use, but if you are solely just doing track days in a car, we would sway you more towards the Corsa. But because of the Corsa is a, a slightly more aggressive compound and it is actually, um, further up the heat range is what that will do is it won't be as effective from cold on the road road and you can get a little bit more noise with that pad and obviously the the racing pad isn't recommended for any road use and, and i believe in some aspects it, it's not actually applicable with any warranty so it's just an out and out race pad so we actually don't fit that at all only in our race applications but as i said the go-to pad is the strada um, it gives a massive improvement improvement over the standard pad. Um, I believe it is capable of withstanding heat up to about 600 degrees, which for a direct replacement is is absolutely huge. Um, I think the operating temperature is between 150 to 300, so it is absolutely perfect from cold. So I don't know whether any of you have driven a car with a with a slightly different pod uh, pad compound. You really notice it on a, like a cold morning if you get straight in the car foot on the brake, most Jaguars have been automatic, the car will naturally lurch forward until it has some heat in there. So they're the three pad options. It's really quick, um, simple. We stock most of the range in Strada. Um, and like I said, if you are doing track use, we would sway you towards the Corsa. In an ideal world, we would recommend to change to the Corsa pad just when you're using it for track day, but it would be absolutely fine to drive that there on that pad. And that is, as Nick said, compl uh, compliant with your warranty. So if we go on to the next slide for us, please. So the F2000, so going back to all the different um, shapes, et cetera, and patterns on the discs that Nick was talking about, the most popular choice for, for modern vehicles is, is the F2000. This is the only pattern we stock in our range. Um, it's extremely uh, strong because of the spiral curve in there. And as I was saying earlier, it's like really unique to Tarox. There's no other manufacturer that offers this exact um, style. So um nick explained all the heat treatments with these this is the direct replacement that we do for the jaguar so for example um just going off the range if you have the f type with a 380 mil disc and those discs and pads are worn and they need replacing we can offer a direct tarox f2000 in that exact size that will fit with your existing caliper and then we would recommend to fit the strata pad with that so that's the, the next step up on, on the, on the um, list really for brake modification is a direct OEM replacement. So you're getting a far better product than the original Jaguar equipment. Um, it's, it's obviously balanced. Um, it's got all the corrosion treatment properties and it will dissipate heat a lot better than the OEM disc. So you will see a large increase on, on braking performance. So it's a really good alternative to fitting just a standard disc. And pricing wise, which I'm sure most of you are thinking, it is actually very competitively priced. It's similar costings to the original Jag Jaguar prices. So it is more expensive than, than a, a, an aftermarket disc, but it is within tolerance with the factory Jaguar prices for a disc replacement. So if you were to go to the Jaguar main dealer or something like that, 
it would be pretty well priced within that. And we always work with touts to try and do that. We do very small numbers, but we try to keep the, the price point correct within the Jaguar prices to make sure that it is feasible to replace that. So, so that's the next step on, 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 the, on the chart, really. So if you go to the next slide for us, please, Andy. So the two-piece variation of this disc, I'm not going to talk about any of the other grooves or pattern. I'm just solely focused on the F2000 because this is predominantly the Jaguar range because of their slightly heavier, high-performance car. This is the, the go-to pattern. So as most of you can probably see the difference with this, the earlier, the previous disc was a solid steel variant. So it's a vented steel, so they're cast as one piece, whereas this is the bespoke range that Nick was talking about. So... The center is an aluminium bell and the rotor is the external. So that bell is unboltable from that disc. So this is the next step from the standard replacement. And the same with this, we offer a direct replacement to fit with the existing Jaguar caliper. But because this is obviously a bespoke product rather than a cast product, it does increase the price slightly. Now, the benefits with going over to a, to a two-piece rotor is the way that the disc will dissipate heat. So as you can see, the center is made from a completely different material to the outer. So essentially, the outer disc can expand and contract separately to the center of that. So the bolts on the actual back of that disc have very are actually slightly oversized the hole. So they, they call it a floating disc. Um, that's the, the kind of common term. So they have a spring washer on the back, which allows movement side to side um, and for that outer disc to expand separately. So the benefit of that, most race cars will always have a two piece rotor rather than a solid um, is, is they will cool much better and there's less chance of them cracking or, or just uh, warping under heavy conditions, if that makes sense. So. That's the next step up from a standard. We, do, we don't offer this in the whole range yet. We are working on this, but we can do made to order across any range. So if you had a, an application that we don't currently have, we can just make to order. Um, there's about four to six week um, lead for manufacturing from Tarox in Italy. Um, but the current models we offer this for at the moment is the, the F-Type and the XKR. And we're also just working on the F-Pace at the moment. So. As I was saying, this is the that would be the 380 mil size disc, and that will work with the existing caliper. And we would obviously fit a Strada pad to match that. So we could go to the next one. Eh? So um, going back to the to the kind of biggest package, and this is the the full brake kit. So as I was saying earlier, this isn't the go-to package for every car. Some of the, the earlier vehicles that have got smaller applications, um, most of the Jags are actually fairly well braked. Um, most of um, the braking performance can be improved with just the, the disc, the direct disc and pad replacement or the two piece option. But if you're doing a lot of track use um, or you're really finding the limitation of the current braking system, this is where we, this would be our go-to. So, um, Discs are the same as the two piece. Um, so depending on what vehicle is, is depending on what size we would spec. So for example, just going over the F type and the F pace and the XK, this is something that we supply a lot of. We actually don't go that much bigger than the standard size so that we can stay behind the original fitted wheel. So we go up to a 390 millimeter rather than a 380, but it is still the same design with the F2000 disc and the fully floating bell. Now, where the, the biggest change is, is obviously replacing the caliper itself. So most of the Jaguar applications, other than certain models like the, the Brembo, the S-Type R, the XKR, and also the later XK150 model had the, the Alcon uh, factory fit. They are all with either a four-pot four pot, uh, piston or a six-pot on the Alcon. Whereas all of the other calipers, mainly in the Jaguar range, are usually a large single pot. So that's great for, uh, for to stop the car quickly and effectively. But as you can imagine, when you start moving a large amounts of fluid, pushing that larger ca caliper, as Nick was saying when they were racing these, um, you do not get anywhere near the amount of pedal fill um, and a repeatability with a, with a six pot or an eight pot caliper. You just get far more brake fill. Um, so... Pretty much most race applications will always have a four, six, sometimes eight pot caliper. I think in some instincts, I think 
uh, Tarox actually go up to a 16 pot caliper, which is for some of the big SUVs. And that's just to gain you obviously a lot more pedal feel um, and you can find the biting point easily. So that's the extreme end of the spectrum. The B34 and the B38, um, that's the B34 in the picture there, is the most common application that will fit. And a full brake package will come with the braided lines, brackets, pads, and the disc all to match. Now, to just give you some ballpark on the figures with the brake package, it'll obviously vary hugely depending on the model, but the direct disc replacements are obviously your best and most feasible. Going up to the full packages, it goes anywhere from mainly the disc size is where it reflects in the price. It'll go anyway from sort of 1,500 pounds up to around three and a half thousand pounds plus VAT, plus your fitting. So as you can imagine, that is the, the top end of the spectrum. Um, and we can also offer the motorsport applications within this. Generally with the motorsport applications, we'll have different finishing on the calipers. So as you can see in the photo, these are hard anodized, they're in bright blue. When you go over to a race application, we'll normally go with like a black hard anodized um, and we'll use slightly different um, pistons etc and seal kits in that caliper so as you can see on that caliper they have no external dust seal so they do require a little bit more maintenance than your, your OEM style caliper your OEM style caliper will have a, an outer dust seal um, so rubber seal that most of you have probably seen if you've ever taken your pad out and then the internal o-ring which is obviously stopping the fluid from passing that piston now with the race applications they do not have any external seal at all so Going back to basic maintenance, it requires um, regular brake fluid changes um, and just making sure that there's no corrosion on any of the pistons in the caliper to avoid any damage to the seal. So I think that's pretty much covered most of the range. These are a couple of um, just images of, of direct replacements on the right there. That's actually for, for an F-Pace. Um, that seems quite a common issue that we, we're getting with those is that um, the smaller disc option with the, the three litre diesel is quite a big car, doesn't give you a huge amount of pad feel. Um, so we've done a, an F2000 direct replacement for that. Um, interestingly, that vehicle picture there actually went back to Jaguar for a warranty. And uh, as we were saying earlier, it doesn't, doesn't affect that at all. So um, in the top left is, is a full package we've done for an XKR100. Um, that's a 2002 car that the customer's done quite a large amount of uh, supercharger modification. So the OEM direct replacement um, just wasn't um, big enough for his application and use. He's spending a lot of time on track. So we use the B34, which is that one that was seen in the previous slide. And that's a 365 mil package, which fits behind uh, the 18, sorry, the 19 inch wheel, um, which is a, a great little um, option for that. Thank you.